Hello guys, this is me here. So today I'm gonna do a review that is a review that I would definitely do because this monster is one of my favorites and he to me is like the boss, even his name. It's an Ultraman Taro monster tyrant, but this is actually the uh, well this one here is a knockoff version of the Spark Doll one, but this variant, like the design of the suit, is actually like the newer one, but I still consider him as Ultraman Taro. Um, now this figure is basically like with the other ones that I reviewed, like Vakashim and Brocken are from Ally Express. Now, this one here is definitely a knockoff because if you look at carefully like especially like his tail this is literally like a copy of the um it's like they use the same mold but it's a copy of the spark doll tyrant but considering of it being a copy it actually looks quite good although the only problem is that not everything like, and we'll explain it on the details, but for now, let's just get into the figure. So, he's a monster that appeared in Ultraman Taro, which was a 1974 or 1973 show from one of the Ultraman and Ultra Monster series. Um, he's actually a pretty good monster for, like, fighting, and he's actually one of my favorites. And this monster is actually not your ordinary because... He's actually a mix between different parts of different monsters. However, he wasn't the first monster to be made out of different parts. I don't know if you remember Jumbo King. Yeah, Jumbo King looks similar to this, but he's a different type of one. Uh, he was the first one to be a tyrant to where he had like the different parts of different monsters. But for like the Showa series and for like mix because monsters are different parts of different monsters he's the second one to be uh one of those although eventually you know we did get more monsters that were made out of like different parts of different monsters but we're gonna you know that's like for a different story but for now let's just get on to tyrant so he appeared in ultraman taro as a monster that had souls of different creatures which I do have some, but not all of them. Um, we'll get into them first. Uh, so, for an example, like his legs. His legs here, for an example, are from Red King, who I have. Um, although, what I don't understand is that the design of it looks a little bit different. But it is a, supposed to be Red Kings because if you look, it has like this weird, I call it a corn on the cob legs, but yeah, it basically is from Red King. His toenails or his feet could either be from Gomorrah, but I wouldn't say it because Gomorrah actually has like a, a, a heel horn or whatever that is there. So I wouldn't say it's from Gomera, but the nails or like parts of the feet could be from it, or it could be from any monster that has like the three toes. But yeah. Now, this pentagon shape here in the body is actually from a monster called Bemstar, who looks more like a bird, but is also a space monster who can absorb energy. Um, yeah, the stomach is from Bemstar. Which I don't have because he's kind of boring, but I don't have him. Now, the arms here are from a monster that I'm planning on getting eventually, or it's going to arrive tomorrow, called Baraba. And, but it wasn't like Baraba from like, you know, like it wasn't like that type of Baraba. It was this monster to where he was purple and he had like these wacky hands and he had like a, a weird sword thing. One day I'm going to, because he's coming to the door tomorrow, so I'm going to do a review on it eventually. But his arms are basically from Baraba, Baraba. The only difference is that for some reason, his axe hand is actually flipped around. Because on Baraba, his axe hand would be here and his ball hand would be here. But instead it's been swapped around. But it actually is supposed to be like that though, so it's not like an error or anything. But yeah, his hands are from Baraba. Um, 
Now the head here, now on the Showa one, it looked more like a Simon's head, but I believe the head of it was pretty much a Seagoras's head. Um, like from like the base of it to like the nasal horn and the face, it's from Seagoras, and the two little horns there too. The ears, however, are from Icarus from Ultraman uh, Seven, who is an alien. He looks more like a weird gremlin thing. Um, now the horn here, the horn here could either be one of Seagoras's fins or whatever, but I think it's either from a. Uh, in the Showa one, I believe the horn looked more like a Black King's horn, but reversed in a way that it was the other direction, not, like, forward. Um, however, the horn that I see here looks more like an oil drinker's horn, or like a Zaragus horn. Well, not a Zaragus's horn, but if you didn't know, oil drinker has a horn that kind of has, like, he, he looks kind of like Zaragus, but not exactly like the body shape, but he does have, like, the... It's like the nasal horn is like on his face. It's not even like on the tip of his nose. So, yeah, the like on the new tyrant, I think the horn could be from like it could either be Seagorse's fin horn or it could be a black king horn or a um what is uh oil drinker's horn or any other monster that has a horn like this because that horn, I mean that horn looks too thick to be a fin, so I don't think it was from Seagoras. I think it was either Black King's horn that has been modified in a way that it looks straight, or it could be a, an oil drinker's horn. However, like I said in the Showa one, the Showa one had a horn that looked like this where it was bended. I'm not going to do it on this figure, though, because he's supposed to be the newer one. But yeah, it's either a Black King or an Oil Drinker's horn, or maybe that's just one of Seagoras' fin horns. These horns here are from Seagoras. He does have these two little horn things. Now, the back here is from Hans Aguirin, and I don't know about these circle things, but I do know that the spikes are from Hans Aguirin, who is basically a four-legged... Um, he was also a Choju, actually. I forgot to mention, Barabaz is a Choju, and, uh, what's his name? Hans Aguirin was also a Choju as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, the back of it is from Hans Aguirin. Now, the tail is quite strange. I believe the base of it is a King Crab's tail, which it is. But with, like, these two little horns... Or, like, these two little brush things, which gives him that crustaceous look, could be from Hans Aguirin as well. I think what it is is that, now, in my own opinion, and I believe this is true, that these bristle things are from Hans Aguirin, but, like, the base of it, like, the bulb segmented tail, that's from King Crab. I don't know about these dots here, though. Maybe those dots could either be from, uh, there's also another monster that people say is the tail, and it's called Mukadender, who is the centipede monster, who's also from Ultraman Taro, but I don't think that's part of, uh, I think the circle things are from Hans Aguirin, and this brush looking like the, the, because, I don't know if you're supposed to know this, but King Crab's tail actually has one spike on each tail, not two spikes. But I think the two spikes could be... F like, when they made Tyrant, I believe that the base of the tail was from King Crab, and so is this tip part here. But for, like, these bristle things, that's from Hans Aguirin. And so is the dot things, I believe. But yeah, his tail is basically a mix between a King Crab's and a Hans of Gearin's. The only thing that most, because of the brush thing, some people say it's from Hans of Gearin, But it's it's mostly, it's basically a King Crab's tail, but with Hans of Gearin's, uh bristle tail things, whatever it is. Like the bristle spikes, because if you look at it, it just looks more like a crustaceous, like if it was a bristle. So, yeah. But yeah, he's basically made out of different parts of different monsters, and because of his very because he's made out of different parts he is very 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 powerful pretty much all the ultra brothers had lost a fight the only one who didn't lose a fight was ultraman taro and eventually and and this is what i find weird despite his looks 
he can actually fly. Wee, I'm Superman, or I should call myself Super Tyrant, whatever. Um, he does fly, and eventually he does fly to the Earth, because origin because he, I believe he came from space. Because he traveled on many different planets, like from Mars, he, he traveled on Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, um, Mars, Uranus, or Uranus. Um, he also traveled in, I don't know if he was in Mercury, but he was in some planets that are very infamous. Although eventually he came to Earth where he was flying to Earth and defeated Ultraman Taro. However, unlike the other Ultra Brothers, he could not defeat Ultraman Taro for some reason. Like, for some reason, he lost with Ultraman Taro, and when he lost, because... Ultraman Taro threw like this spear at his stomach and he was like down and then eventually he blew up to smithereens so Yeah, so he did get his butt kicked though in the Showa series um, Now for the like the newer ones He's appeared in a bunch of shows and actually I forgot to mention in the Showa one He did appear in another show that was also in the 70s, but it was called Hanuman or something, or the Six Brothers or whatever, where he was teamed up with Gomorrah, Astromons, Dustpan, and some other monsters that I know, I don't know much about. For some reason, his roar in that one is actually different. It sounds more like a crustaceous creature. I don't remember which one. It just sounds kind of strange and doesn't sound right, but he does appear in, in Hanuman, so he has, like in the Showa series, he has appeared twice. He appeared in Ultraman Taro, then he appeared in a show called Hanuman, which is basically a, a god monkey uh, hero that he appeared in. But then after those appearances, he did make an appearance in the newer Ultraman shows. And also, he did a made an appearance of Ultra Galaxy Neo with Gomora and Elaking. Sadly, he killed Elaking with his axe hand, which just sliced him. Um, but actually, what I find ironic is that there's two things I find ironic. I'm not so sure why in the newer ones they decided that he would be gray and brown instead of just blue and green. Plus, I also don't get why. Gomora and Tyrant would fight together because originally in Hanuman they were actually buddies like they would actually be teaming up with each other to fight the Ultra Brothers but I guess in Ultra Galaxy Neo since Gomora became a main protagonist of monsters they decided that Gomora would fight Tyrant and eventually Tyrant did lose despite his powerful powers especially the absorbing thing he basically needled him with his horn which gave him like this sonic thing to where it like blows him up and when he got lifted up in the air with his you know giant size he eventually exploded and basically died he was uh there was something about what i call a rayonix blood or something like a ray blood thing or something and it was with a dude called grande or something i don't remember but he did make an appearance, uh, like, his main appearances were mostly, well, he made other appearances also in other Ultramans as well. But yeah, he is a very well-known monster, not just because he was one of those Showa ones who made their appearances back. He is also known well, like, he's very well known because of his, you know, combination of monsters. So, yeah. Okay, the history, I think, was way too long. Now we're going to get on to the, the, the details. I forgot. Oh, now you already saw with the tail on the previous video of the articulation, but his articulation is quite nice, and it's actually six points for this knockoff. His arms can rotate 360 degrees, which is quite nice, so you can, like, use them to bash people with this. It's sad that this thing doesn't eject out like how it's supposed to, but that's okay. And his hand here is cool because you can like use it as like a hatchet or like to cut things, so that's pretty nice. Um, his legs here are kind of stiff because he's soft vinyl. Sometimes with soft vinyl figures, they don't always move freely. 
but his legs do move 360 degrees. Kind of like with Vakasham, he's not as easy to move. I mean, if you want, you can do some walking, but you're just gonna have this. And it just makes his tail like bounce up and down, which I don't kind of mind because he does move his tail a lot and like use it for whipping things, like with King Crab, which I'll do a review on eventually. Um, now, his tail, like with the other ones, do move, but since the tail was like, like since the tail was like separate from like the body, and because of how it's a knockoff, it's like slightly different articulation, I'm able to rotate it a lot freely than the other ones. Usually with the other ones, you would just get a swivel, but with this one, I can rotate it all the way, despite being the same mold of figure. I'm not so sure why, even though it's a copy, the tail's a little bit crooked, but it's not that bad. I don't know why they didn't paint part of this silver. It would have been nice, but they didn't. But everything else on him so far looks okay. Um, oh, I forgot. Another one that made him six points, and I don't know why, but on the other ones it was a glue seal. But since this is a knockoff, his head can rotate 360 degrees. So that you can have him look around. Which I actually find it very nice. Even though on the real one, which is the Spark Doll one, it would have a glue seal. And all of them had glue seals, except for the very older ones. Um, on this one, they decided, because it was a knockoff, that this head would be able to rotate instead. So, I don't know. I just find it interesting. But I don't mind though, and actually, it, even then it doesn't, because the color of his head is literally separated from his body, so it's not going to look bad no matter how you put, pose it. So if you make him look around, it doesn't look terrible, because his head is a different color. It's not like it's matched from the same body, but even then, even if it was, it still looks good. And plus, I really think a head articulation was perfect, because... It's not just because, oh, there's not too many figures with the head articulations. Mostly because, um, he's one of those figures where, you know, like one of those monsters who where sometimes they have his head moving around. So it's nice that they gave him that feature, even though it was originally a glue seal. But since there's a copy of it, they decide to make an articulating point. But anyway, yeah, that's six points of articulation, which is very, very nice. Now for scaling, uh, because I got that out of the way, um, actually for detail, let's just go into detail quickly. The detail on it is quite nice, although I'm not exactly sure why his eyes and his mouth is red. Actually, it kind of looks bloody a little bit, but that's just mine. Um, now, there are many different variants of these tyrants, like, there's, since this is, like, from Ally Express, they're gonna make, like, different types of them, like, in different colors. Um, the details on the legs look quite shine, shiny, and that's actually quite nice. It looks good. The Bem Star stomach looks nice. I don't know about the hair thing, but it looks okay, though. Um, I like how they give him this rocky sort of pattern look, and his Baraba arms look very nice. Um, his head looks very nice as well. I think this particular tyrant could be based on the Ultraman Z series, or not Ultraman Z, but he was pro because I've been told that there's another tyrant that looks like this, but has red eyes, just like this, and I think he's based on that one, but I don't remember which Ultraman it was in, though. But even then, his red eyes don't look too bad, they look okay, although it does make him look a little bit creepy, and actually, if you look carefully, you can kind of see his pupil a little bit. It's hard to see, but it, he does have a pupil, though. But you can't see it well. Uh, it's not easy to see. His nasal horn looks good. His ears look good. The spikes, I don't know if they're supposed to be this deformed like that, but they do look okay. I don't know why they didn't paint the tail of it from, like, the back painted. It would have been nice if it was all silver, like the body, but... What do you expect? This is supposed to be like a toy. It's not like a model. If you want to have something so detailed, just get an X plus figure then. But so far, the de the details on it are like 
a five out of five thing or like a like you know not five out of five but it's like half fast a little bit so like parts of it is okay but then parts of it are like not really colored in but it's okay so far i mean i like him and i mean i i actually seen other tyrants that were actually a lot worse than this so i was actually lucky getting this one here but anyway yeah so that's tyrant's uh detail so that's nice so yeah um okay now for the scaling since i was done with the history and the articulation and details with gomara it's perfect i think gomara should be a tiny bit taller but this is perfect because in real life he's actually like 62 meters and he is like 40 meters tall so this is a perfect sizing in my opinion yeah it looks good to me how about red king same thing very perfect as well oh i forgot to mention with vakashim this thing also has a history thing as well which i forgot to mention um but yeah what about an ultra hero here's ultraman wow the sizing is just fantastic even though these were like 500 figures that's fantastic how about ultraman jack who he also fight as well in the showa series it's perfect as well wow that's fantastic he's doing pretty good with the scaling what about a boeing 747 well i'm not exactly sure but it doesn't look bad for scaling so i think it's okay how about a bus mm, pretty good i actually think it's accurate that's good to me how about optimus prime that's fantastic he's actually doing pretty good with the scaling kind of like with vakashim Here's these uh, fighter jets that are also from Transformers, but I thought it'd be cool to show. Yeah, this doesn't look bad at all. How about a tractor trailer? Good. What about a building? It's good. It's perfect. How about this one here? Oh yeah, this is actually perfect. I think he should be a little bit taller, but this is perfect too. So you can like, you know, destroy stuff like how he does it because he's just, he's not a Choju, but he does have parts of a Choju, but he's not exactly a Choju, he's more of like a Kaiju. Um, what about a gas station? Well, here's a fire station, but what about a gas station and a fire police department? Oh yeah, it's perfect as well. Probably a lot more better than with these actually, but yeah, it does go well as well. Or, you know, good. Okay, now let's compare it to, um... Did I compare with a bridge? Yep, here's a bridge. Pretty good. It's quite nice. So, yeah, accurate is, you know, it's quite good. It's, you know, quite accurate. Um, what about King Kong? Well, depending of what size you scale him in... He actually looks quite good. If you want, you could do like a Tyrant versus King Kong to see who's the boss. Or even better, how about Godzilla? It's perfect. Even though you may think it's not perfect, if you're like depending on how you scale Godzilla because he he varies in sizes, this is a pretty good scaling really. You could if you want you know team up or mostly if, if you want fight them and see who's the boss that's quite good what about Sodora I don't remember the size of Sodora I think he's like 70 or something I don't remember but it looks okay Naronga definitely good as well Naronga is always about this position because he's basically a Baragon so yeah how about King Ghidorah from any Godzilla shows. I think this is like the GMK one. Well, depending of what size you're using, because like I said, sometimes these kaijus vary in sizes in shows. This actually looks pretty good though. If you want, you could either make them fight or team up to see who's the king of the hill or whatever. 
or even Mount Fuji, whatever. Here's the Retosaur from the um, 20,000 Fandoms or something. Scale is perfect because he's not supposed to be too big, the Retosaur, and actually he varies in sizes as well. Um, oh, and I forgot, here's a very tiny Luxury Jet. Pretty good. That's nice. Um, oh, and what about a Vakashim? Eh, for Vakashim, it's not so great. In real life, Vakashim is actually supposed to be taller because he is 62 meters or 61 or whatever. He is 65, however. Um, what about Brocken? Ah, uh, this isn't too good. It's actually worse because Brocken is actually supposed to be taller than him because he's 63 and he is 62. So, scaling with both Vakashim. I, I, Vakashim is not too bad, but they both are not so great with scaling. But if you just don't care about the size and you just want them to pair up to have what I call the handless monsters or the monsters with like the crazy hands, it would be perfect. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but there you go. Now, that's Tyrant for reviews. I would give this figure a 9 out of 10. The reason why I give him a 9 out of 10, and it's kind of like with Brocken, is because parts of it is not fully painted, but the rest of it is, which is okay, and it's not terrible. I mean, I've seen figures that are worse than these other ones. Um, should I recommend this even if it was a knockoff? Absolutely. And actually, just to mention, I forgot to say this, he is a soft vinyl figure. And he's actually, and actually with these Ally Express ones, they feel just as real as like the 500 figures or like with any other Bandai figures. I mean, they seem to be the type of toys that would last up for a while. I mean, if you wanted to, you can even take it in the water, but I wouldn't recommend that. But... They do sort of feel like doggy bath toys or whatever it is, so, yeah. But I wouldn't take them in the water, though, because they could have the paint appealing, uh, appealing off. Maybe just take the ones that go into the water or something, like a king crab or something, or any creature. But don't take these ones that don't go in the water. Um, it, he actually goes very good with those other creatures who have the crazy hands. So if you want him to look good with, like, your Chojus who have, like, the wacky hands or, like... Like, if you're, if you're into those monsters who have hands like these to where they're, like, wacky and they're not even fingers, they're just crazy-looking hands, like, let's say, Gigan or Megalon, go ahead and pick him up. He goes very well with, I mean, with these other Chojus who don't have fingers, but they just have regular hands. He actually goes well with it as well, so, yeah. So, for a knockoff... I would recommend picking it up, and for someone who is into Tyrant but can't get the uh, Spark Doll one, and they want to get a large Tyrant, go ahead and pick him up. I recommend it. And also, um, yeah, he's a pretty good figure, and he's a must-have monster because he's not just from Ultraman Taro. He was also a monster that, you know, it's, it, like I said, is a must-have, you know, like with... Vakashim, he's those monsters that are like, I should get him and stuff. So, yeah, like I said, I give him a 9 out of 10, and, um, yeah, so this is a monster that is one of my favorites as well, and he, like I said, goes good with your Gigan or your monsters that have, like, the wacky hands like that to where they're not fingers. But anyways, yeah, I think I've been too long with this video, so I hope you enjoy, and, um, I forgot to mention, his powers are actually quite nice, because his powers can just whip people with his tail, his, um, Bemstar thing can absorb energy that fires into it, his hands can be used for physical fights, and his thing can also shoot out and, like, wrap around people, like the arrow thing. Um, he can also fire out a fire out of his mouth, so that's how, that's how cool Tyron is. Tyron is actually, like I said, a pretty cool looking monster, and he's not just your regular generic dinosaur creature. He's this type of monster to where he's made out of different parts of different monsters. But anyways, yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and goodbye.